Hey, welcome to Resource Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. Please continue to like, share, subscribe to this channel while you still can because uh, the New World Order is preparing another list of cannot talk about. The United Nations, with the blessings of YouTube, Google, and other social medias, is preparing another list of we cannot talk about if it goes against their guidelines. Under the United Nations Human Rights Agenda, deeming hate speech, okay? Things we cannot say that would be considered hate speech. So this would coincide with the medical uh, information, cannot talk about the discernment, misinformation, what they deem, what they deem is incorrect information under this new agenda as a Bible believing, scripture reading, follower of Christ, the new world order is putting together a list of what they consider hate speech. If someone says bad mouse illegal immigrants, that's considered hate speech because they have a right to look for uh, work and uh, new life and everything else. So if you're bad mouthing that, that's considered hate speech. If you are bad mouthing the uh, homosexual community, saying it's an abomination and an affront to God, that's hate speech. If you are saying bad things or disagreeing with the agenda of uh, transhumanism, transgenderism, uh, LGBTQ soup nonsense, that's hate speech, and you'll be taken off the air. This all coincides with the time of sorrows and the coming of the Antichrist, his agenda. You as a prepper should know how to feed yourself, clothe yourself, survive in the worst of conditions because God is going to test you beforehand to make sure you are ready to take on what this new world order is going to put upon us. If you are not ready, you're going to crumble. You're going to fall apart. You're going to pull your knees up to your chest and cry like a little schoolgirl, saying, help me, help me. In order for you to be prepared for this coming tyranny, which is already on its way, you are going to have to become a follower of Christ. You are going to have to have knowledge of scriptures. And right now, it is my belief, as well as many others, we are in the time of sorrows. Now, you can find that in the book of Matthew, chapter, starting out with chapter 20. I would start there and read it all the way to the end to get you a good idea of the horrors that are coming. And let me give you an example so you have something to think about. For those of you that don't believe or unaware, the Lord Jesus Christ says, one, people are going to be taken away, disappearing. One will be out in the field, one will be gone, one will stay. One will be laying in bed, one will be gone, one will stay. One will be grinding wheat, one will be staying. One will be gone. People will start disappearing. And if you are not saved, if you are not a follower of Christ, you're going to be saying, what just happened to my significant other? What happened to my wife, my husband, my son, my daughter? Where did they go? Cell phones will be nonstop ringing. Home phones will be nonstop ringing. Voicemails will go unanswered. Police stations will be overrun with missing persons reports. And because you are ignorant and denying the Christ, God, you're not going to have any idea unless you are prepared for that. And everybody says, well, if I'm a believer in God, he's going to take me up. No, before everybody goes, everybody's going to have to experience the coming of the Antichrist and the horrors that he will bring so that reaffirms your belief that you were correct. People that say, I don't believe in hell is not changing the fact that hell exists. 
People can also say, well, the sun isn't rising. You look outside and you say, well, the sun's bright and shiny. You're an idiot. Look at it. It's right there. You'll never convince those people until they experience it themselves. Just like the idiot fool mayor in New York that has now cried, well, you know, we got too many illegal immigrants that's destroying the city. Why are you a sanctuary city? Why were you welcoming it? Until it affected you directly and people are so mad at you because of your ignorance, now you have to make a statement. When the time of lawlessness affects you, which it is right now, you better wake up and you better be prepared spiritually, emotionally, mentally to endure the test until it is your time to be taken up to heaven. And you're not going to know what that is unless you are confirmed, born again, baptized believer. The time of lawlessness is not only millions of people crossing our open borders, robbing, raping, pillaging. That's lawlessness. But it is also lawless government that is not enforced in the law. But it is also the lawlessness of breaking God's word, his commandments. That's lawlessness. When you say, I can make a man a woman by putting on a wig and lipstick, that's a lie. That's lawlessness. That's going against God's word. I can make you a man by adding parts or a woman by subtracting parts or whatever it is. That's a lie. That's a time of lawlessness. It's going against God's word. And it will be magnified to the point where you say there is no justice. There is no truth in the time of lawlessness other than what the great liar, Satan himself, is feeding you through the propaganda networks. So when the time comes and you're saying, I don't believe in hell and I don't believe in God and I don't believe in this. And when the time comes, we're saying, why isn't she answering that phone? I, I've been calling all day and she's not answering. I hope she's okay. And she's nowhere to be found or he's nowhere to be found. Or your son and daughter, your aunt and uncle, your friends are not answering their phone and go straight to voicemail. And you're left behind and saying, man, this world really sucks. I can't buy anything. I can't do anything. And people are all gone. And why aren't the cops answering? Because you didn't believe, you didn't follow through on what people have warned you about, what people have told you about. And then when you start seeing more devastation across this world, that you can't believe it and say, wait a minute, you know, that city just went down to an earthquake. Morocco just had a 6.8 earthquake, killing a 1,000 people so far. Maui, Hawaii, whole cities burned. You read what's going on in the time of sorrows. Magnify it a 1,000 times, and you're not going to want to be here. But this is Satan's world. He doesn't want green trees and beautiful things and everything else. No, he's a great liar. He's the deceiver. He is the ultimate destroyer. And you have to be prepared for that, mind, body, and spirit, to endure until the time is shortened where everybody goes, as Christ says. And how are you going to do that? You're going to say, all right, I'm going to give up my sinful life I'm going to quit the smoking, the drinking, the gambling, the drugs, the swiping left and right or whatever it is for hookups, which is all lawlessness. It's going against the scriptures. It's going against God's word. I'm going to put down the cigarettes. I'm going to put down the dope, smoking the weed, start fearing the Lord, fearing what he does and does not do. You're only breathing because he allows it. You only have things because he says, okay, you can have it. But to attach yourself to the earthly things will be your doom. 
be prepared. Say, I'm not afraid of it because I was born again. I got baptized, submerged in water. I repented my sin. I changed my ways. And now I am ready to confront the spiritual warfare, the lawlessness that is preceding the new world order, the antichrist, the lawless government that only wants you to worship them because that will be the Satan at the beginning, worshiping government. And then you'll know what test to pass and what be, be prepared for the next test that is coming. I hope this makes sense to you. You need to heed these words. And not just mine. There's plenty of people out there telling you the exact same things. The trumpets have sounded. Get ready. If you're saying, I don't believe in hell, it doesn't make any difference. It still exists. I don't believe in God. Well, that's your problem. Because the last word you're here before you die, and while you're on your deathbed, is not the people weeping and wailing, saying, pass on my son, pass on my daughter, have a good life, I'll see you when I see you. Those aren't the last words. It's not going to be the priests talking over you, giving your last rites, or the minister preaching to the people that looking on your dead body. No. The last words you hear are going to be from the Lord himself saying, depart from me because I don't know you. And you're going to regret that because you'll be in hell, fire burning forever until he destroys that lake of fire with you in it. Or he's going to say, welcome, my son. Welcome, my daughter, to the kingdom of heaven, life ever after, where you never have to worry about another thing forever. There'll be no sorrow, no disease, no famine, no hunger. Welcome to paradise. You definitely don't want to hear depart from me because I never knew you. Those will be the last words you'll ever hear. You think about it. You get yourself right with God. Repent of your sins. Change your life once you repent of your sins. Ask Christ for forgiveness. He died on the cross for you. It's a free gift. Take it. Then become born again, submerged in water, baptized, washed clean, and follow his word. Greg out.